Because the title of my message today is, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That one phrase that they give us that they give us in Psalms 118, I'm gonna go over that and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tread on it for so much that you're gonna say, oh I know this, but I don't know nothing else. I know that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in just to mention just the mention of that verse should wake up something in the spirit. It should, it should wake something up and, and let you know that hey, I can start my day off with this is the day that the Lord has made. He made this day right here. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. He made this day for us to rejoice and be glad in it. What can you do in this day? So in Psalms, what it does, and you have to look at look at Psalm, Psalm where, where Psalm comes from to get this is the day. If you go back in Psalms, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tip those Psalms a little bit, and I want to read something to you because, and we're gonna jump some chapters here, but I, I want you to get what I'm saying because we're gonna stick to this is the day, and I'm, I'm gonna go through the rest of it. it says in Psalms 118, and this is what's so unique about God's word. He says, "Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good." His mercy endures forever. It starts, the chapter starts off with that. So you start, this is the day that the Lord has made. And you can start off with that first verse. To talk about God. And do it forever. Then you go right down to verse 5. And it says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me, set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. So he's for you. And this day, this is the day. He's for you this day. That's why we rejoice in that. Then he goes on to say, Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. So in that day, you're not concerned about the people that hate you. Because you're serving a God that's telling you that this is the day. That he made for you to rejoice in. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to close this off with verse 8 when it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Yeah. So you can't put confidence in anything but him. He said, You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my son. And he has become my salvation. So, in Psalm, when it said that this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We live right now in this day. And he goes on to tell us, I'm going to give you some scripture behind this, because what's so important about this is the day is that we can't look at tomorrow. We're not, we, he tells it in, in so many scripture verses, it tells us about tomorrow. He goes on and, and, and tells us about, about this day that we walk in. We walk in this day, whether it be for any circumstance, situation in your life. We walk in this day here. We have this 24 hours. We have this time. And see, we, we know that we make plans for the future. We know that in a few days, in a couple of days, me and my wife are going to celebrate our anniversary. Okay, we're planning for that. We, we're looking forward to that. But right now, this is the day that's important. This is the day that I'm rejoicing in. So, if, if by chance I don't make it to that anniversary day, this day here, I had that day to rejoice. I had that day to serve. I had that day to be a part of who God wants me to be. And that's so important. That's what's so important to me. If we go over to Matthew, I'm gonna go to Matthew 6 and 34. And I'll show you, well, before I go there, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right here to the Proverbs. Get right over to Proverbs. It says in Proverbs 27, I think it's 27. Let me make sure I got the right one. 26, the first chapter or the first verse in 27, it says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know. 
what a day may bring forth. So we ain't worried about tomorrow, people. Even though we plan for the future, we don't plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow's not a day we're concerned with. We're concerned about this day alone. I can't really expound on how important this is the day is. I, I, I can't because I'm so busy planning, and I never looked at this until I thought about this for a while, and I said, we plan so rigorously for our future, for our stocks and our investments and our life that we're going to live beyond this day. We plan for that. And if you don't, you're, you're foolish. He tells us we should plan for that. We should do that. But we have to understand the basis of what this is the day means. This today is this day. And you know, even though we're believing and we're thanking God tomorrow is going to come, if it doesn't come, we have this day. And that's what I look at basically. And my scripture verses are all wrapped around, around tomorrow because we have to understand how, and I, and I don't mean to say unimportant, but I, I, we have to understand how Matthew, I mean how uh, important today is and how tomorrow God describes tomorrow. This is what he says in Matthew 6 and 34. He says, in Matthew 6 and 40, 34, he tells us, he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own thing. But before he does that, before he gets to that last part that says, Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, he goes right into saying about birds of the air, how they how they're how they, how they fed. He talks about uh, which of, which of you can can by worrying add one cubic of stature about your clothing, what you wear. He just goes into all detail about do not worry about your life, what you eat, what you drink, nor your body, what you put on it. It says, is it is it not, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? He goes on to describe everything that's happening at the time that it's happening, it's present time. Mm -hmm. The birds are being fed. All these things are happening. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as beautiful as this one lily that's on the field. In that day, we see that really. It's that day. It's that particular day. And don't get me wrong now. I mean, I'm looking forward to a day, two days from now, and getting on the plane and doing whatever we're going to do. I'm looking forward to that. But I rejoice being with my family here, being with the Trinity. I rejoice in this day. This day to me is vital. It's important. So when I wake up in the morning at the beginning of that day, when I plant my field of ground, I say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I appreciate you, I, thank, I, I praise you. When I thank him for that, I'm rejoicing in that day because I know that's the day he made for me. He made, that's why I say, this is the day that the Lord has made. He made it for us, for you. So I will, we will rejoice and be glad in that day. See. I'm trying not to take the perspective too crazy of what people think. Man, you, you can't, it can't just be that. It, it can't just be that one particular time of day. It's got to be more than that. But in actuality, it's not. Because from that day, you may plan for the, for the, for the year down the road or go and take a trip to the mountains. Or, you may plan, but that day is the day you're going to use to do that. So in essence, the rejoicing of that day and being glad in that moment, being glad. That's why people say, I've heard a lot of people say, uh, copy the end or enjoy the moment or take time in, the, that, in that time that you're in and make the best. Oh, they'll say, make the best of this day. And they give you examples about how you need to take advantage of the time, of the day. Now see, we think about that one little phrase about if I could put time in the And I speed up. I'm learning that. When you have grandchildren, when we live our lives, and my wife and I have lived our lives in our time, 
and our children and then when you really see time being because the grandchildren go and you start to go home one day there in the house and the parents stay the next day you get to see them again. We don't get to see them at all because they are distance away from us. So when we see them they're talking and we're trying to get them to formulate a command of Poppy or Vanessa or and then in that time, in that day, we see a family member's go to France. We have to go to the school and go to the school and go to the school and go to the every chance you get to spend with an individual that you care for, that you love, a child, a grandchild. When you do that, you give them that day to rejoice in. You give them that time to enjoy this is the day. To enjoy understanding that the Lord has made this day for you. He made that day especially for you. Make it personal for where when you say this is the day the Lord has made, I really enjoy because God you made that day for me. Enjoy. Make a memory that day. Make a time that day where it's spent to do something that you really want to do. You really enjoy doing. Of course, we got to work. We go to Davis. You go to your job. For those of us who still work, you go to your job. And you spend that time. I, 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 I don't think I have to let you know that even going to your job, that's still that day. Even though you're at your job, you have to work, wherever you are, it's that day that you rejoice in the Lord. It's that day that's so vital. Why do you think that the Bible and Scripture, even the Old Testament, tells us tomorrow, we're not concerning ourselves with tomorrow? Because we want you to understand that day, this day. Every day we spend, every day we breathe, every day we wake up. We spend that day to serve Him. We spend that day to rejoice in Him. And maybe it doesn't seem vital or important to some people, but to me, every day is happy and given. Every day is it's kind of accomplishing the 24 hours that I have. The 24 hours that He gave me to live with joy. So all you have to, I can only live for that day. And that's why, like I said before, he gives us so much meat in the, in the scripture verses about tomorrow. He wants us to know about tomorrow so we don't get too wrapped up in what's going to happen tomorrow. And then we can keep our cares and our worries and our concerns and our loves and our happiness for that day. For that day. If we carry that on and we start to concern ourselves, well, tomorrow, you know, I gotta, well, tomorrow, that's why he says, tomorrow's got its own worries. It's got its own issues. We're not gonna worry about tomorrow. We're gonna worry about this day. And that's not even worry. Let's take worry completely out of the, the focal point. We're going to concern ourselves with this day. But that's why he tells in James, it gives a great explanation to the time James would be. James tells us something to wake us up and let us know that, hey, look, this is the deal here. It says in James, it's in James, in James it says, do not vote for God. Come now, Woo. You who say today, I mean, it says tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year and buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. But what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So if, you, if you're looking about planning for tomorrow, that's fine. That's fine and dandy. But let yourself be known that tomorrow he promised you. Tomorrow doesn't say, hey, we, you got tomorrow, we're going to get, God, I'm going to give you tomorrow. That's why scripture verses tells us in James and in 
in, in Psalms and in Proverbs and in Matthew. It tells it all over because it wants us to understand that tomorrow will take care of itself. Tomorrow will have troubles of its own. So today, today, this is the day the Lord has made. That's why we will rejoice and be glad in this day. And I, I, I make so much emphasis on that because every day that we live, every day you get to spend with your significant other is a day that's in value to you. And to you. Every day, that day you spent was a day that you could say, Are you getting there? Now, when tomorrow comes, we'll take care of it. But right now, this day, this day, it's important that I serve this day. That I rejoice this day. That I'm, ha I'm happy this day. That I'm excited this day. No matter what it is. I've learned in my life that the little bitty things are now more important than the big things that I thought were so great. Because my wife, she kind of elevated me to a level of understanding that she can see and I think her BFF is the same, but they can see what we sometimes can't see. We're looking at bigger pictures, and they're looking at little bitty pictures, but the little bitty pictures are bigger than the big pictures. In other words, they can see the beauty in this, and it's something that I was like, oh, you know, and I used to say that, but I don't know. I said, now when they see that little thing, or see that squirrel being fed in the backyard, or that chipmunk chasing that other chipmunk getting stuff out the corner out of the, out of the container to eat and you find beauty or fun or entertainment. Now here I am. Hey, look at that squirrel. Hey, look, he chased that chipmunk. You know, and you find the beauty in those little bitty things that you could not find before because that day is the day that we're enjoying, we're rejoicing in. Listen to this right quick. It says a guy, and it's called an average lifetime. In a lifetime this guy, Tom Heyman, he, he did this in his book, In the Average Lifetime. He said, he said, in a lifetime, or well, the average American in a lifetime spends three years in a business meeting. Spends 13 years watching television. Spends $89,281 on food. He consumes 35,138 cookies, if you like cookies, and 1,483 pounds of candy. He catches 304 colds, is involved in six motor vehicle accidents, is hospitalized 10 times, and spent 24 years sleeping. Now, this is what Jim, this is what Tom Heyman said. But I'm just saying that basically, he did all that analyzing, all that whatever he believed he called it or whatever it was in the lifetime that we live in. He did all that to let us know what we do in our life. <clears throat> when I'm telling you today that all that he says here to me is invalid if you don't have this day. If you don't have this day, all that is irrelevant. If you don't understand this day and rejoicing in this day, all that stuff to me is just it doesn't matter. Because you have to understand this day. Even though you plan for this day or the future of your life, this day is the day that you plan. And you say, well, I did that a years ago. I did that 10 years ago. But hey, I waited 21 years to retire. Every day was that day. Every day was that day you planned for that final retirement where you don't go down with it. It's done. It's a done deal. You don't have to go down and build a deal. You don't have to. You can do what you want. And then, for some reason, for me, this day has a lot more significant value. I don't know if it's just the idea that I'm not obligated to if someone else to do any particular thing, or if it's just the fact that I have no time to spend my own and I think it's basically that I have time to spend my head with all the understanding who knows what he wants me to do in that day. And that's the, the vital portion of 
of the message today is understanding that this is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. You know why people can't really enjoy this day? I'm going to tell you a story about the crowd. That will tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. Then the man in the box back there probably said, I don't lose my title of the story. Back. So, I want to tell you about the crowd. The crab is one of God's kind of different creations. He created crabs, but you have to understand the crab mentality. The crab is pretty sharp in the crab. The crab is a simple crab, and it doesn't grow like other animals. It doesn't grow like all the other different animals. Although their body grows throughout their lifespan, the outer shell stops growing. So the outer shell ain't growing no more. It's staying the same size. And throughout the lifespan, when the shell stops growing a certain size, the crab continues to grow. So it's getting bigger and bigger, and the shell ain't growing no more. So it's forced to find a bigger home. It's got to find someplace else to habitat in, to live in, to survive in. So why is it so natural for the crab to move on to something new. It's so difficult for humans to continue to grow. It's difficult for us to grow. We find it difficult to grow because some people think they know it already. And some people you can't tell them that because they've already done it, seen it, or been through it. So we don't, sometimes we just don't grow. We can't do like a prayer. We stay in that position. And even though the shell is small, we stay in the shell. <laughs> We, we don't move to another location to develop or get bigger or to just become more than what we are. We stay in the ship. We don't move. And that's what makes the crab so unique, we'll say. Because he knows how to find a better home, a bigger house, or whatever table. But see, a lot of times we need to step out of whatever is keeping us. When that shell gets too small, we need to step on that shell and continue to grow. And yes, you probably want to, but what does that have to do with this? Thing? Because in that day, that day that the Lord gives us, He gives us that day to grow. He gives us that day to move. He gives us that opportunity to talk to someone else about this side. We have that one day. Because tomorrow is a promise we get that one day to tell somebody about the Son of Jesus. The basis of our ministry, Church of No Walls, as we called it, was to go out and minister to people who don't know Christ. In that day, in that one day, if it took that one day. And that's why for me, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in the summer. Because every one of us need to use that one good script out of someone and understand that the day he gave you, the day he gives you, as you honor that one day, you not only get to rejoice in that day, but you get to share that day, that time, that Jesus. You get to give it to somebody. It's like I was telling God, I mean, you know, it's like, running a relay race and I'm the lead relay and I gotta pass that baton to someone else so they can grab it and they gotta make sure this is a this is an important thing that's why USA lost so many different relays because the baton passing is so important because when he reaches back that baton is supposed to be laid in his hand lightly so he can grab it let them all swiftly go and turn that corner and watch them just pack up everybody because he's going to pass people. But if that baton is not if it's dropped, you think back up to you going, you way back. But it is not passed properly. If the wrong thing is given, the race is done. The relay don't finish. I'll tell you today that we have a baton. This day, we have a problem. 
We have to pass the baton on Jesus Christ to someone else so they can grab it, get hold to it, and they can run their race to give it to the next one, the next lady, the next family, the next child. Because children will care that way. They'll care that way. So we are given this thing. Not just to rejoice and get the baton and run with it and give it to the next one. And you know, you got to give the word right because our perception, our perception and our perspective of what we think of what we believe sometimes a little different. Other people can't handle difference. They can't handle like the crab. They can't handle change. If you can't handle change, you have to make it before you can feel that the home and your house and something else. You have to make it a You have to make it uh, but don't change the word. Never change. The word's gonna be the word. You can't change that. We'll have this word, period. But you give the word in such a sweet demeanor, such a congenial manner that the individual, you can even give it to your child. And they can get it, receive it, and the next point, the child goes with you, you keep it open. But it has to be part So this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But you know, it doesn't stop on that this day. It actually starts for Jeff. It doesn't stop. It starts from the beginning of the morning. Like I said earlier, making the memory. So, in the day, in that day, as we do everything we do, we go out, go out, and we leave this building, even, we can go out and understand that today, this Sunday, right now, we can enjoy this that the Lord made for us every minute. He made for us. And then, when you pass that baton to somebody else, then you really can say, I rejoice and be glad. Because you gave them something. That you brought them into the family. You gave them something that, you know what, you'll see them again. You gave them something where it's eternal. It's infinity. It's, it's a promise. And that promise that you that you lay in the hand with that baton, that promise you give them, with that baton, is a promise. It's not a one day promise, two week promise. I'm going to take it back after two months' time. It's a promise that's good. It's a God, when you make him your, when you make him your own, believe me, you will die. I'm never get to this. I'm a, as, as an adopted child, they, I've been adopted, but I'm, I'm a full blooded man. I'm a part of this. I, it's, it's me here. I'm here. And that, believe me, we never arrive. When we do arrive, we won't be in this place. And we're arriving where we want. So understand that this is the day. Don't be like the crab. Don't be like the crab. Make sure when you get out of the shell, you can give that word that day. You can give.